Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. We have x cubed plus x squared equals 36 and we're going to be looking for x values. So to solve this problem we can do a couple different things. We can factor 36 and we can look at its factor, in other words rational root theorem, or we can do something more special because this is a special type of equation. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor out the x squared on the left hand side and that way I'm going to write that as x squared times x plus 1. Great, so now I want to factor 36 as well but I want to factor it in a form uh, that looks like this x squared times x plus 1. So let's go ahead and look at different ways to factor 36. I can write it as 1 times 36, I can write it as 2 times 18, I can do 3 times 12, or I can do 4 times 9, or I can do 6 times 6. And then they're going to switch out, right? So, so those are these are the possible factors of 36. Uh, and, you know, there is, there is this many factors. Now, which one of these will fit the format x squared times x plus 1? So we can kind of think of it as, okay, if x squared is 1, first of all, one of these numbers must be a perfect square. So here both of them are. Here, uh, 4 and 9 are perfect squares. There are no perfect squares here, so this is not going to work, and this is not going to work either. And this is not going to work, because one of the numbers have to be a perfect square. So that really eliminates the possibilities, and we end up with two cases, which is not bad. If you look at the first one, there's two possibilities, e either x squared is 1 or 36. If x squared is 1, that means x is 1, but then x plus 1 has to be 36, which means x has to be 35, which makes no sense. So 4 and 9 are the only choices we have, and they're both perfect squares, so I'm going to go with 4 here, that means x is 2. If x is 2, then I get 3 times 4 which is not going to work, right? Obviously, that's not going to work, so we kind of have to do it differently. In other words, 4 and 9 has to be like this. x is going to be 3, so that this is 9 and this is 4. Okay? And so basically, we were able to write 36 as the product of two numbers in this format, which means x equals 3 is a solution. Okay, that's one of the solutions though. You could also arrive at the solution a little differently. Let me go ahead and show you that approach as well. So you can go ahead and basically put 36 on the left hand side. And then like I said earlier, if, if a solution is an integer, then you can try the rational root theorem, look at all the factors. But you could also think about it this way. I can factor, I can break down 36 into two pieces such that one of them is a perfect cube and the other one is a perfect square. And that is 27 and 9. In other words, we can write negative 36 as minus 27 minus 9. And then pair up the x cubed with 27 and the x squared with 9 so that you get difference of two cubes and difference of two squares and a common factor as a bonus. So now this can be factored as x minus 3 multiplied by x squared plus 3x plus 9. And from difference of two squares, this is x minus 3, x plus 3 equals 0. Great. Now x minus 3 is a common factor. So we can go ahead and take it out. And then we get x squared plus 3x plus x, which is 4x plus 9 plus 3, which is plus 12, equals 0. As you know, x equals 3 is one of the solutions. That was probably obvious. You could also do guess and check, trial and error. The other equation is a quadratic. By using the formula, we get a solution which is not real. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 48. That is a negative 32. So I can write it as square root of 32i and that is divided by 2. 32 square root of 32 is 4 root 2, so we can kind of write the x as negative 4, plus minus 4 root 2, i divided by 2, and everything is divisible by 2, so we can basically write this as negative 2 plus minus 
2 root 2 i and the other solution is just going to be 3 this since this is a cubic equation there will be a total of three solutions two of which are non-real complex and they are conjugates let's go ahead and take a look at the graph which will also verify that we get one real solution. By the way, you could also tell that there's going to be a one real solution by looking at the discriminant, but I don't think anybody wants to memorize the discriminant of a cubic equation, which is somewhat complicated. Anyways, this is the graph of our function. I put the 36 on the left-hand side because if you graph x cubed plus x squared, y, uh, 36 is going to be way above. But anyways, you see that there's only one real solution, one x-intercept, and that is x equals 3. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.